Hello, welcome to Evening Prayer on this Monday of the second week of Advent. And uh, today in our readings, both in the reading from the prophet Isaiah and in our gospel from Luke today, um, we see the power of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. In the first reading, everything was prophesied by Isaiah, uh, how the 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 mute will sing and the deaf will hear and the blind will see and the uh, the lame will leap like stags and all these things um, uh, that we did see manifest themselves in the person of Jesus when he came he did all of the things that were prophesied prophesied by by Isaiah in the first reading in our gospel today from Luke we see one example of that power and love and compassion of Jesus at work. Jesus is speaking in a house and it's packed full, people crowded around trying to get close and hear uh, the words of Jesus. And uh, a group of friends brought uh, a man who was uh, paralyzed and they were trying to get their friend to see Jesus because they believed that Jesus could help their friend. And getting to the house found that the crowd was so big that they couldn't, couldn't get in the house. So they, uh, they didn't give up. They went up on the roof and uh, lowered him through a hole in the roof and uh, at the feet of Jesus. At that, Jesus said that... Uh, your sins are forgiven. He said, as for you, your sins are forgiven. Of course, the Pharisees and Sadducees that were there took offense to that, thinking that it's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. And so Jesus tells them, he says, look, what's easier for, for you know, what's easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk to the paralyzed man? He said, but just so you know, that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sins. I say to the man, rise and walk. And he did just that. He got up, picked up his mat, and glorified God and went home as Jesus instructed him to do. So a couple of things going on here with this. We see, of course, the the authority of Jesus that he can forgive sins and he handed that on to the apostles to his priests and down through the ages to today you know he sent them out and whose sins you forgive are forgiven and that is passed on that apostolic succession that we enjoy in the Catholic Church that's why we go to confession to uh, confess our sins because we know that through the authority of Jesus, our sins too are forgiven. Uh, this, another side of this story here, I'm guessing four, one man on each corner of the stretcher carrying their friend. It might have been two if they're big, strong guys, but you know, it's, let's say four, four men uh, carrying their friend, bringing him to Jesus because they knew that Jesus can help him. They could have given up. Well, sorry, it's too, it's sold out. There's no tickets. We can't get in. It's a packed house. You know, we'll just try it another time. They could have uh, uh, just given up on that attempt to bring their friend to Jesus, but that's not what they did. They took extraordinary measures. They climbed up on the roof. They lowered the man through the roof. You know, and we have to look at that and think, am I that kind of a friend? Do I have that kind of zeal to take extraordinary m measures to do, to go out of my way, to do whatever it takes to introduce someone, to bring someone to Jesus, knowing that Jesus can help them. 
Is that who I am? Or do I just say, well, I'll do it another time, or maybe, maybe later? You know, and this we're not not just talking about you know, casual acquaintances, friends, but you know this this holds true to to family members and and uh, neighbors, every everyone, anyone that we know that would benefit from an encounter with Christ. Do we take any kind of extreme measures to see that that happens? You know, what kind of friends are we? You know, it's something that we can reflect on today as we uh, look at this gospel passage. So, oh, and there's one other little thing too. It reminds me so much, if you look at this, and I think I'm going to start using this gospel maybe for uh, when, I, when I do a baptism because this is exactly what's happening in the sacrament of baptism. Our parents, our godparents, bring us to Jesus, knowing, trusting, believing that our sins will be forgiven and will become an adopted son, daughter of Christ, be a member of his family growing up, you know, under the protective watch of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this, this example of, of the men bringing their friend to Jesus is, is the same as when we bring someone, you know, maybe you're a, a sponsor of someone in the RCIA program. There's a lot of work that is involved with that. You have to go to meetings and walk with the person and, and instruct them and, and teach them everything and, and guide them and, and just love them to the feet of Jesus. So it's a, it's a beautiful comparison there with what we see in the gospel today and what we still do today in the sacraments of the church. Both reconciliation, the power and authority of Jesus at work, baptism, where we go to extraordinary means to bring someone into the church. So as we celebrate our Advent season and prepare ourselves to encounter Christ, let us uh, reflect on the readings today. Let us pray our evening prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yours is more then mortal beauty, every word you speak is full of grace. My heart overflows with noble words. The king, I must speak the song I have made. My tongue is nimble as the pen of a scribe. You are the fairest of the children of men, and graciousness is poured upon your lips, because God has blessed you forevermore. Almighty one, gird your sword upon your thigh. In splendor and state, ride on in triumph for the cause of truth and goodness and right. Take aim with your bow in your dread right hand. Your arrows are sharp, peoples fall beneath you. The foes of the king fall down and lose heart. Your throne, O God, shall endure forever. A scepter of justice is the scepter of your kingdom. Your love is for justice, your hatred for evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above other kings. Your robes are fragrant with aloes and myrrh. From the ivory palace, you are greeted with music. The daughters of kings are among your loved ones. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Yours is more than mortal beauty. Every word you speak is full of grace. The bridegroom is here, go out and welcome him. Listen, O daughter, give ear to my word. Forget your own people in your father's house. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your Lord, pay homage to him. And the people of Tyre shall come with gifts. The richest of the people 
shall seek your favor. The daughter of the king is clothed with splendor, her robes embroidered with pearls set in gold. She is led to the king with her maiden companions. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. Sons shall be yours in place of your fathers. You will make them princes over all the earth. May this song make your name forever remembered. May the peoples praise you from age to age. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. When you took on flesh, Lord Jesus, you made a marriage of mankind with God. Help us to be faithful to your word and endure our exile bravely until we are called to the heavenly marriage, the marriage feast, to which the Virgin Mary, exemplar of your church, has preceded us. The bridegroom is here. Go out and welcome him. God planned in the fullness of time to restore all things in Christ. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time, to bring all things into one in him, in the heavens and on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God planned in the fullness of time to restore all things in Christ. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. We eagerly await the coming of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly bodies to conform with his glorified body. So, by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Come and set us free, Lord God of power and might. Come and set us free, Lord God of power and might. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved, Lord God of power and might. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Come and set us free, Lord God, of power and might. See, your King comes, the Master of the earth. He will shatter the yoke of our slavery. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. See, your king comes, the master of the earth. He will shadow he will shatter the yoke of our slavery. To Christ our Lord, judge of the living and the dead, let us cry out with faith, come Lord Jesus. Lord, may the world know your justice, which the heavens proclaim. May your glory fill the earth, come Lord Jesus. For us, you took upon yourself the weakness of man 
Protect us with the strength of your own divine life. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to those imprisoned in the darkness of ignorance. Show them the radiance of your own divine light. Come, Lord Jesus. In your hum humility as a man, you took away our sin. Now in your glory, grant us true happiness. Come, Lord Jesus. When you come in glory to judge us, gather the dead into your kingdom. Come, Lord Jesus. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us offer our prayer to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord, free us from our sins and make us whole. Hear our prayer and prepare us to celebrate the incarnation of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night, everyone, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>